Welcome to A Home That Heals. I'm Bree, along with my mom, Dee, and we are so glad that you are here with us today, listening in and hopefully joining in the conversation. So coming up today, some kids like to play on dirt mounds. Some kids like to go, you know, hiking up in the mountains. My kids have a laundry mountain. I mean, (laughs) it's fluffy and soft. Who wouldn't love that? You know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with social media. You know that, right? Yeah. Because I- Me too. I know. It's so sad that it has so many negative uses and you know, we have to be so careful with it and all of that. But, oh, I, I do love my Instagram feed because I'm really careful about what I like. And so most everything that shows up in my Instagram is just happy, wonderful, uplifting, really great things. And so I have several things that just inspired me lately. And one of them was a very simple picture of a notebook page. And I I can't even tell you who it was. I probably should be able to remember that, but it was this page. And at the top, this person had written grateful for, and then she wrote down all these things that we would normally think, ugh, really? Early wake-ups, no, thank you. <laughs> but she said, grateful for early wake-ups equals children to love. Oh. And, it, and then this whole list mm. just goes down. And I thought, that is so inspiring to me because I am, I, I, I don't know how vocal I am always about it. You can probably tell me. <laughs> but I am definitely an internal grumbler. I grumble about a lot of things. And that, that kind of thing that goes around in your head that just sort of gets you negative about everything, I I need to stop it. Mm, mm. So when I saw this, I thought this is kind of a cool thing, kind of a good way to take those things, start making a list of the things that I grumble about and then put an equal sign. What's the positive about that? Yeah. Oh, that is really good because there is, there's so many ways to turn that, shift that thinking so that you can start seeing the item or the thing that you used to grumble about as a blessing instead of one more thing to do. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so let me, let me test you, okay? I'm going to give you one, okay? Oh, okay. Because uh, lately you grumbled just a little bit. Oh. Just a little bit about, about cleaning your house. Oh, yeah. Because, and I have to, can I, friends, can I just tell you, she, she has a right to grumble. <laughs> because we've had a really hard time teaching our grandkids to pick stuff up. It's yeah. just they have a habit of just, you know, dropping things. I'm sure no none of your kids do that, right? <laughs> yeah, no, but, you will not see us doing a podcast anytime soon on the five top ways to help your kids <laughs> pick up their belongings. Oh, it is ridiculous. Yeah, it is, I don't know. So could hard. you send me ideas for that? I would love it. Just oh, send yeah, us a DM yeah. on Instagram or Facebook because I need help. But you I know really what? Please help. don't send us a message if you're one of those people. Now, not that I don't love you, <laughs> but please don't send us a message if you're one of those people that is just so organized and somehow or the other, you have the gene that started to teach your kids this the moment they were born. Because that's not us. <laughs> Our children are older, and we've made tons of mistakes, and now it, we're in, you know, crisis zone. So yes. please send us messages if you've been in crisis zone and you figured there it we out. Go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. But I'm going to give, so I'm going to give you this little test. Okay. Okay. So how are you going to be grateful for your house to clean? Put a big equal next to that. And what could be a positive about that you have a house to clean? Okay, that's good because I actually do this a lot. And I think about the fact that my kids are making memories. Oh, Because when I see the (laughs) 1,500,252 pieces of little cutout papers. And you're not exaggerating. All over the floor. (laughs) I think of how they just made coins for their cash register (laughs) that they were playing store with. So, okay, they are making memories or they are learning. Yes, that's good. And so that does help me a little bit. I'm not going to say it completely solves the grumbling factor, but it helps a little bit. It would. And picturing that instead of picturing that backbreaking work that you're going to have to do to get every single one of those thousands (laughs) of little pieces of paper picked up is good. Now, another thing you have is you, you have... Gosh, you have mountains of laundry. And I I only had two it kids. It is impressive. Yeah. So yeah, you have this mountain facing you. Doggone it. It's, <laughs> I, 
every time I walk in your laundry room, I just have to walk out. It's stressful to me. So <laughs> how do you, how can you turn that into, you know, something? Well, I mean, some kids like to play on dirt mounds. Some kids like to go, you know, hiking up in the mountains. My kids have a laundry mountain. I mean, <laughs> it's fluffy and soft. Cheap. Who wouldn't love that? Yeah, that's good. I did. Do uh, they actually do that? <laughs> um, Maybe I, not. Actually, yeah, I have seen them do that. Oh. But okay, um, laundry. That's a good. That's a hard one. Um, How can you be grateful? It's kind of like being grateful for wasps. That's my hard thing. It's like, <laughs> Lord, why did you make wasps? What possible good thing do they bring to the <laughs> planet? I have no idea. Yeah, But it's kind of the way with laundry, you know? I would like to go back to the days where it's acceptable to be dirty, you know? <laughs> where it's or okay to wear your clothes for more than clothes. one day. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, until they just completely have a stench to them that it's it's all right. No, I am thankful, though, that we have clothes mm-hmm. to wear, you know? Yeah. And there is, especially here where we live, we have the four seasons. So I'm very thankful that we have layers. We have sweatshirts mm-hmm. and coats and um, and in the summer that my kids have their swimsuits because that means they got to go play in the water. So there's a, wow, there's a lot of blessings there. And to remember, you know, that there yeah. are people that they don't have that. That's really true. That's, and you know, when I went to Africa years ago, I think I became aware of so many of these things. I mean, you could kind of go down the list if you even think about toilets to clean, mm-hmm. you know, when I was there, there was no indoor plumbing. And how how grateful can we be for indoor plumbing? And we take yeah. it so for granted. Uh-huh. I thought of, of it in the shower this morning, actually. I, I love my morning shower. Mm-hmm. And it's something that we take for granted, but it's one of those simple things that we should be. I mean, let's should on ourselves for a minute. Um, we should be grateful for, because mm-hmm. not everyone in the world has that. So those are those things. But I think you hit on a couple of things. And when you first responded to my first little test there on, um, you know, the the early wake-ups, house to clean, all of that, it sounds like you've started a real mind discipline, you know, like disciplining your mind to when you start to grumble, thinking about, okay, what's the good in this? You know, like the kids making memories, that's a good thing. I mean, have you, it, are you really being intentional about that or is it just something you've started to do or what? Well, it's really funny. I don't think you even know this, but lately I've been watching The Minimal Mom. Oh, I don't know if you yes. found I her on YouTube. I just ran across her a while ago, yeah. And because I really needed help. <laughs> I just <laughs> was like, okay, this is getting a little bit out of control. And I love her videos. I love her tips. Uh, it's great, you know, to help you get your home organized and not have so much stuff, you know. And mm-hmm. I love how she talks mm-hmm. about all the items, how they can create, you know, this space in our mind and... um you know, can cause anxiety and, and just for us to feel like we're living in chaos. However, there is a part of me that I think, again, you were made for this. You, your family is not the minimal mom. My family is not the minimal mom. I, I love her tips and I'm using them and I'm implementing them to get rid of some of the crap we have around. And listen, she's got a dumpster out in front of her house right I now. Do. So <laughs> you, you really are. We are That's, doing good. You, you, yeah. But I, I also look at some of her videos and I'm like, oh, that's kind of sad. Like I love my table, our craft table, mm-hmm. and I love all the creations mm-hmm. the kids have all over yeah. it. And I love our fridge that has all of their art projects and different things on it. Those make me happy. Those bring joy to my life. And so I wouldn't want to completely get rid of that and have this totally clear, clean, crisp home because that's just not us. We right. we like it to be a little more creative and I love books everywhere that the kids can just grab and read and um, blankets that they can get mm-hmm. cozy in. So it, it's kind of deciphering what are the things that bring you joy, even when they're, you know, strung about the house. And what are the things that are just unnecessary mm-hmm. to have around? Yeah. So I think that's what I love is we all have different personalities. Our families are all different the way we function. Um, our needs. And even in different seasons, there might be a season where I really need my house to be totally and completely minimal, but that's not right now. Right now I love the paint. Mm -hmm. I love the craft supplies. I love all of that being accessible and easy for my kids to get out. And I, I really try to be intentional about not getting super mad Mm -hmm. when it's a mess. Mm -hmm. Now I, those 1,500,000, whatever pieces of paper, I'm not going to pick those up. <laughs> My kids are going to pick those up. They made the mess. But I I try to not get mad about it, you yeah, know, and I do try yeah. to come alongside them and help them. And um, I won't say I don't, 
you know, sometimes get frustrated, but. Okay. <laughs> yeah. By well, we and large, yeah. I am working on, I'm a work in progress, right? right? Aren't right. we all? Well, you know, um, I always think about, you know, being grateful for the good is pretty easy, but being grateful for the bad is hard. But that one verse just comes back to me all the time. You know, it's in Thessalonians 5, give thanks in all circumstances. And, you know, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Mm. Hard to do, all circumstances. But I think of that all the time. And when I see something, you know, that um, is frustrating me, I try, I try to, okay, where, okay, Lord, where's the, lo- where's the lesson in this? Or what's the good in this? And a lot of times I don't really take the time to contemplate it enough to figure that out. So I guess I'm hoping that by talking about it, I will start being more more conscious of that effort and make a little more effort to do that and really ask the Lord to just kind of help me because it's not natural. I don't think that's for most people. There are some people out there. There's just, don't you know, some people that are just so positive about everything. And yeah. that's a beautiful, beautiful trait. So yeah. not one that I have. But another one, and maybe you're seeing this with um, some of the things you're doing, is just being grateful having a spirit of gratitude for the ordinary things in life. You know, just the things you do forget, like the shower in the morning would be one example. I think that's what made me think about it because I knew I'd be talking about this today. Those small and simple things. And I wanted to tell you a story about um, our little one, our little gal who's six now. We have hummingbird feeders all up in our front porch area and our back porch. And I'm pretty used to, I've been, I've been inviting hummingbirds to our home since you were little. So hummingbirds, I love them. I get so excited when they first show up in May. And I'm sad when they leave in the fall, but they're kind of an everyday thing now. I'm used to them. Mm -hmm. But our little gal, I mean, I love it because she's at our house a lot. She's seen a lot of hummingbirds. You would think every hummingbird that comes to our feeder is the first one she's ever seen. (laughs) Grandma, Grandma, there's a hummingbird. I miss those. She used to call them honeybirds. And I kind of miss that. That was so cute. But anyway, they're hummingbirds now. She graduated. (laughs) And I thought, oh, I I want to figure out a way to keep that fresh joy about things that that happens when you're little like that. And I, I suppose it's not, you know, you do get used to things, but that's a reminder of how these small, ordinary things that become ordinary even are still special. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I love this concept and I, and again, I have not arrived and I still need a lot of work, but I think when you're thinking about trying to create a home that heals, there is something so healing when you have an attitude of gratitude, mm-hmm. when your mind is mm-hmm. focused on the good and the blessings that you have in your life, because you know what? We're going to go through hard times. We're going to go through times where it's really difficult to look around and be grateful. And we're going to go through times where it's just an abundance. It's yeah. everywhere we look. But if we teach our kids how even in those difficult times to be able to look and see what God has done, what God is doing, and the good that he has blessed us with that day, that minute, that hour, it is going to completely shift our mindset. And it's going to help our kids come out of a world that is complaining and always wants more and always wants, you know, something different. And, and all our feelings are based upon what happens to us to realize that it doesn't matter what happens to us. It doesn't matter what is going on in our life, the chaos or the difficulties or the hardships. We can have peace. Mm -hmm. We can be Mm -hmm. healed. Mm -hmm. We can be whole as we turn our eyes to the Lord and we keep our eyes on Him and choose to see the beauty that is all around us, even in the mess, even in the heartache, even in the difficult times. I just think that is something that I need and so, mm-hmm. therefore, I know mm-hmm. my kids need it, too. Yes. And the way they're going to get that is if I model it. Yeah. Oh, man, that is so true. Maybe just to round this out, I heard a country song this week. And, you know, you know me, I can't ever remember the artist. I can't remember much about the song, but I remember this line. And if you guys are country fans, then you'll be able to say, oh, that's so-and-so. But this line was... It was talking about something about, you know, the simpler things in life and that Mm. kind of growing up and wishing that we could go back to that simpler life. Mm. And this line was, all we had was us and that little bitty house and a lot of love. 
We had it all when we didn't have much. Mm. I can relate mm-hmm. to that. Some of the richest times of my life, especially your dad and, and my marriage, were when we were really struggling and when our big, you know, date for the month was to go get a icy. You know, it was like that was that. But those were memory making times, special times. So remember, we had it all when we didn't have much. That's, that's kind of a good thing to oh, remember. That's a good phrase. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on A Home That Heals. We love these times with you. We love hearing from you. So please hop on Instagram or Facebook at A Home That Heals and send us a message. Tell us your tips and ideas for for being grateful, even when it's hard. I'm sure some of you have walked through seasons where it's been really difficult to see God's beauty and God's goodness, yet you have, and He has given you eyes to see it. And so we would love to hear your stories more. That's right. That's what we're all about here on A Home That Heals. Thanks for being with us. A Home That Heals is produced in partnership with 89.5 KTSY. To find out more about them, go to ktsy.org.